Hello, welcome to this vlog. It's been a while since I've actually made a proper voyage log where we actually go somewhere on the boat and then tick off a pub of the week along the way. So look forward to that coming later. Um, but first I want to say I've just witnessed my own first TV series uh, being transmitted on BBC Four and that whole bizarre uh, scenario that it's just been surreal the amount of comments I've had on Twitter and Instagram and, and YouTube uh, just blow my mind uh, the reception has been unlike anything I've seen um, and I think that should be good or should set us in good stead for making some more but that conversation hasn't really taken place yet so as soon as I know if there is a second series in the works I'll let you know I really sincerely hope I can make some more of these because it just, it, yeah, I mean, all of that is a team effort. So it's, a, it's a project that we've all worked together really hard to make and it, an incredible experience, L really, really hard work, but um, I'd definitely do it all over again. This video I want to dedicate to two people. Number one, Paula Offutt. Paula is a Crank It crew member now. Uh, she's supporting me on Patreon and um, she's come from North Carolina and she's just interested in all the canals. So pa thanks Paul, I hope this video uh, tickles your fancy. And uh, we've also got Natasha Alka. Natasha, thank you so much. I know you're looking for a boat. I hope you're getting nearer that goal. And uh, thanks so much for, for patronizing my videos and uh, joining the Crank It crew. Welcome, welcome on board. And both of these guys have red flags next to their name, not because they've been naughty, but because they are producers, so uh, they can tell me what to do sort of thing. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's get started on the vlog. This was filmed in between making episode two and episode three, so it covers the area from Bugsworth Basin, skipping Whaley, Whaley Bridge. I didn't stay long there because of no mooring spaces. And, uh, can continued around to uh, Marple Junction. I really wanted to do a YouTube video just to fill in the gap, but this will get, also give you an idea of what I get up to in my downtime from filming. Hope you enjoy it. See you at the end. that mist coming off the water. It's very early, it's about half five in the morning. So, yeah, so apologies for having look really, looking really tired. Yeah, we're in a lovely place here in the Peak District and look at all the cute little goslings. Look at them all. This used to be a depot for like, um, well, whatever, picking up coal, or gripstone, limestone. And lime, about, about 80 boats a day, according to the, the um, guidebook, coming and going from this area. And yeah, you can almost imagine it because it has just been left to ruin, so it's really cool to imagine how, how it used to be. The naughty lass is just over this wall. There she is. And now we're going to go back inside because it's cold, even though it's May, it's mid-May, end of May. It's uh, freezing, <laughs> but so good to be in the Peak District. used to be used by lots of working boats and is now an ancient scheduled monument. I'm not quite sure what that means but it's safe to say that there'll be no redevelopments going on here. But I love it, it's just, it feels like you're in this sort of magical little world that you're allowed to explore um, and you do get tourists coming here and everything but yeah if you come here and it's a bit quiet I think you do feel like you've got your own little world to yourself, it's great.
that's uh, Whaley Bridge, that arm there. So I've come from over there, Bugsworth Basin. And yeah, I know, I'm at the front of the boat because my friend is uh, driving. Just get a chance to get some sick canal footage from the front of the boat. Check it out. wish I could get that in this place here and get it all smartened up but then perhaps I'd be really precious about it and be polishing it all the time so <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Whilst my friend Stu did a great job of moving the boat along I had time to stalk the towpath and some of the boats that are in the marinas nearby. Some of them had absolutely fantastic paint jobs. I always consider myself more of a canal person. Like I'm a fan of various canals and things rather than being a fan of boats, but some of them you just look at and you go, ah, oh, it's so nice, you know. Especially when you've got <laughs> absolutely battered, but lovely boat like Naughty Lass here. Gosh, he's been through some times. Well, I'm moored up in perhaps I think the only two-week spot that I could get in anyway on the uh, on the canal, and uh, yeah, I'll show you in a sec. Halfway along the canal, or so is a place called New Mills, and I think it's a lot more happening than uh, any of the other locations because they're mostly like little villages or towns which don't seem to offer too much and even if you wanted to explore New Mills itself just got some wonderful views over the river Goit uh, and the train tracks and all its other things this is still the only spot that is nearby and it's about a mile away <laughs> um, so I, I find like a lot of the places on the Peak Forest I mean, the moorings are quite scarce anyway, it seems, but um, yeah, most of the places don't seem to really want to welcome too many visitor moorings. It'd be quite weird for an area that's mostly sort of reliant on tourism, I'd say. I'm just walking through Goit Side Meadows, which is like a nature reserve right next to the canal. So, I mean, if you've got a dog, I mean, you're a sport for choice um, around here. This is something I've never seen before. It's a standing sundial. They lie two degrees west longitude, longitude and at local midday, 13.08 hours summertime or 12.08 hours GMT, the stones cast a shadow on one of the other standing stones and you can tell um, whether, whether or not it's a summer solstice, vernal equinox, autumn equinox, or winter solstice. That's quite cool. But I think I'll stick with my uh, Casio for now. Yeah. So that's the nature reserve. We're going back onto the canal towpath and to see one of the probably the most famous boats on the whole of the system. It's right, even more famous than mine. Check this out. I don't want to get too close because you know people live in these boats and I hate it when you get cameras sort of peering in or just you know, people sort of hanging outside the boats. So uh, yeah, you've got to respect other people's homes, guys. There's obviously nowhere to moor here. Um, these are all just like the permanent long-term moorings or whatever you call, want to call them in the marina. But there's also like a, I mean, there's facilities here like pump out and stuff. But there's also like a, uh, one of these buildings, I think it's that one there, is a, uh, a, a brewery and they, they they serve their speciality is smoked beers so if you're really into your craft ales or whatever you want to call it then that's that is the place 
when they're open. They may not be open. Right. Okay, now we'll go down the steps into the town. Pubs-wise, you can't go far wrong in this town. Apart from this one here, the Pride of the Peaks. Pretty much all the locals told me that don't bother with it unless you want to see a fight happening. <laughs> so oh, it's a shame because it looks looks quite nice. Although it's quite small, this thing here, this place here, beer shed, that is the one. That's Pub of the Week, guys. Pub of the Week. Tunes, mate. Tunes, yeah. They're letting me DJ in this pub. Well, not officially. It's got a record player in the corner. There's no one here, so just gonna go for it, innit? This is another good pub. Uh, it's got a good pool table and. Um, Excellent welcome, but it's a Robinson's one and they all look the same, so loses points for that. And then we've got another contender for a place of pub of the week, and just because it's so friendly and welcoming, and that's this place, the Mason's Arms. And obviously I can't go in there because it's too early. Literally, it's like half nine. Next, I'd like to recommend this vegetarian cafe. Um, just the food was delicious and although I am a meat eater I do like to have a break from it every now and then. Public toilet there and there's a sign that says but even in a lovely tourist town like this you still get troubles. I'm really impressive how many uh, DIY shops there are. Loads, there's like three at least I've seen selling all kinds of things. And loads of charity shops, so I think you could spend a good old day here. I've got to say, actually, the charity shops here are pretty good. I mean, look at this little laundry basket I've picked up. That's, that's perfect. That fits in the cracks really nicely. And what else did I get? I went to the DIY shop, got one of these wire things for my drill. Uh, that's a paintbrush. Just have to check. Present for someone. 1940s, 50s game. And just a plain mug because I smashed one the other day, unfortunately. So that would be good. And yeah, and some uh, spray paint for the life ring because I think that's the only thing I can really put on it. Uh, well, a paint that will actually go on plastic. Right, back on the move. So I'm just going to take us past New Mills and then on towards Marple where I've got to moor up the next lot of filming and that's all I want to say that's all I want to say right now yeah at the time I was recording this I just I hadn't told anyone about the TV series I was making so it was quite difficult to vlog I didn't really know where I was but I still had plenty of time to enjoy the scenery and also ponder why it is they call this canal Peak Forest Canal I suppose the reason why they call it the Peak Forest Canal is because there's so much forest. <laughs> so many trees around us on this canal. The weather today is kind of humid so it's quite warm. A little bit damp, a bit of rain today. But I imagine in summer this is the this is the canal to be on because it is it does seem to have quite a lot of shelter from the sun. sign there it says beware giant hogweed it doesn't mean there's like a huge plant that's going to come out and attack you but they are very very dangerous 
uh, and I can show you some juvenile sort of versions of them. Looks a little bit like this, it gets a lot bigger and um, yeah, if you come across any, just, just stay clear of it, I think is the advice. Crazy. I can recommend the services here. I, I haven't used the pump out or anything, but people here are really friendly and I think they would help you out if you, if you got stuck. And they've got ice creams apparently in there, so <laughs> that may be another reason to stop quickly. Right, now this is actually a sweets factory. Uh, I don't know if you know the uh, brand Swizzits. These things, Palmer Violets. Not a fan myself of these. <laughs> and I wish I've, I've got smell of vision because it just smells of sweets. Brilliant. Perhaps the biggest employer in town. I've met loads of people from Swiss. It's just in the pubs, <laughs> uh, in the Rock pub. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a real, real nice people actually they met who work there. But uh, yeah, they must go home every day smelling absolutely amazing. Reminds me of when I used to work for Neil's Yard Remedies. Just come home smelling of essential oils. <laughs> Very popular with the ladies. Older ladies. Oh, oh. Can you <laughs> one thing I've noticed about this canal is there's no no one fishing. I don't know whether that's due to the sort of general decline in popularity of fishing, probably more to do with the fact there's trees above you and power lines as well, so, but probably quite good for fish, fishing if you can get in here, but a lot, I've seen a lot of signs say no fishing, which generally means no fishing. Just seen some more mooring rings, so I guess that's another place to stop there. going through a small town or maybe it's a village not sure because I haven't been able to explore called Disley and uh, if I w did have time I'd definitely head straight for a pub called Malt Disley I think that's that's fantastic I mean that that wins a pub of the week award straight straight away <laughs> but also they serve craft beers and ales and things so yeah I definitely would try it out if I had time quite a few higher boats in this canal so you've got to watch out uh, especially because it is so narrow uh, and if you sort of maneuver around the sudden when it's going really fast you often can end up in the very shallow bits and get stuck so you see what's happened we've run aground because passing another boat is quite difficult so yeah it's very very shallow here but we made it through without crashing into anything Ah, it's all good. <laughs> it's just slowed me to a stop. That's all. There aren't any locks on this canal, but there are two swing bridges and two lift bridges, one of which I'm coming up to right now. And yeah, they're, they're all right. They've got chains on some of the swig bridges so you can just do them yourself. You know, you just push the bridge open and then pull them back with your chain. And then you've got lift bridges like this though. One of them is electric, electric which is absolutely fine, easy. But this one is a little bit of a nightmare. So, Although there is something to tie on to this side, 
is just for the front rope. And the boat just has to drift away like that. Which is not ideal. There he goes. is the other side of the bridge now and it's tied on at the stern um, but also because I'm so bloody clever I've got my uh, I've got my boat hook at the ready so I can pull it back so I got tied on there but you need to sort of be able to pull the boat back a little bit so you can get on it I could probably climb on from there but it's just not that safe uh. There we go, and that's one way of getting through this lift bridge. Ah. Now, as I've said in the description of the video, the title of the video, this is the Upper Peak Forest. Canal, which is six and a half miles to, from Whaley Bridge or Bugsworth Basin to uh, Marple Lock, which I'm headed today, but it's just six and a half miles. No locks, but as I said, plenty of bridges and um, just amazing views. Just, you know, I have to recommend it for that. And if you can get a mooring, yeah, fantastic moorings. Yeah, if the water level's not too low and your boat's not too deep, perfect. And a great one for, I think, holiday boats, really, because it's not too challenging, but with enough to see along the way. Right, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, all filmed on an iPhone 8 Plus, um, but now I've actually managed to save up for an iPhone 11 Pro. So what I'm filming on right now, uh, and that's an iPad Pro as well. So I'm getting pro, guys. You know, I'm, I'm upping my game just for you. So, um, but it, I couldn't do it without the people who actually support me on the vlog on Patreon. If you want to join up, the link is through my website below, so have a look there if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, keep on cranking. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.